heard of the North Star. Do you know how to find the North Star? Does anyone here know how to find the North Star? We become less North Star because of all of these things. Now we go with GPS, right? I get in the car. I turn on my map. And I'm certainly, whatever. Okay, Google. I know I'm probably going to get now uh, uh, in trouble. But I'm telling you, you don't need self-driving cars with Google. I'm telling you. Because... Just by judging this, sometimes it has it way over in the weeds when I'm driving on the highway. Imagine if it thinks over here is the road. But anyway, never mind. Um, it'd be nice. Uh, one thing we need to learn is sometimes how to navigate on our own without all the technology. Because when the tech goes down, what's left? Right? Well... In the ancient world, if you were navigating the deserts, which is the people who wrote this book, many of them, or if you're navigating the seas, which are some also that wrote in this book, Peter knew about navigation, many others, you have to learn when you look up to see where Polaris is. You know where Polaris? The North Star. Turn with me to the book of James that just got read, was just read. And let's read from chapter 1, verse 2 and on, and then I've got a story for you. Consider it pure joy. This is in James, near the end of your Bible. Small book. Powerful statement. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many, what? Kinds. That makes no sense. I'm telling you, that makes no sense. It's like saying, you know what, when, you, when your son is dealing with a kidney stone this big, consider it joy. That sounds really heartless, doesn't it? But yet it's written right here in the book. When John was very young, our elder son, when he was very young, and I think, if I remember correctly, I, I think that James was also with us when we went to the Yucatan Peninsula. And uh, as always with our family, we uh, like to go to historical things and uh, check things out. So we go to, uh, what is it, uh, Cabo, Cabo San Lucas, you know, San Juan, San Jose del Cabo, and then Cabo San Lucas. And, and of course, it's known for partying, and it's known for all kinds of things like that. But you know what the first thing we do is we rent the car. And the first day, well, we eat too. That's always nice. Good food. As long as, long as you know what you're eating. <laughs> right? Right? Uh, as always. And um, we first rented, the, we got the car going and we went to Colba. Right? If you, if you take a, 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 a Cabo San Lucas, there's a highway that goes from San Juan del Cabo, uh, San Jose del Cabo to Cabo San Lucas, and one highway that goes to the, uh, wet, to, the, uh, to the west, into the Yucatan Peninsula, and um, more into that, that, that area that's the larger area of the Yucatan Peninsula, toward Payenque, which I wanted to go to, but it was just too far to drive. And, um, but we went to Colba, which is the highest pyramid in the Yucatan. And uh, we went there, and it's really a beautiful place, and you're walking and going. But remember, I'm in a country that I don't really know. I only have maps. And of course, these guys here, we didn't have those back then, 2004, 2005. And um, so I had these maps. And, and you know, uh, uh, the maps, how are they in Mexico? Let me ask you. It's kind of like Italy, right? I remember when Anna and I were navigating in uh, 
Venetia, in Venice. We're walking along, and we gave us a beautiful map, and we're walking. And then I'm like, uh, we're here, but that's not here. How, how do we get, you know, because Venice is something else. It's like a maze. It's a labyrinth. Uh, with dealing with water and dealing with all kinds of bridges and every bridge brings you to another place the food's tremendous but you may live there forever because you can't find your way out right and um, so I go to a gondola you know a gondola pilot and I ask him where do I go and he looks at the map and he goes no problem he looks and he goes like this he says you just go yeah just Go that way. You know, that was, he said, the map is no good. Well, the same thing in Mexico. I'm going, and I have this map, and I'm going, and it connected well. And then we went up to Chichen Itza. That's a beautiful place, that pyramid. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but look it up sometime, the Chichen Itza, the entire complex there. And the cenotes you find all around there, and those, 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 like, those tunnels underground that are filled with water from the volcanic activity that happened uh, a couple thousand years ago, and, and uh, all of this stuff. So we went to Chichen Itza after Koba. The next day, it's Chichen Itza. We got there about 8 in the morning, 8.30 in the morning. We left early, drove up to Chichen Itza, and then when we were done with Chichen Itza, it was about 1.30 in the afternoon because we had a special thing we were going to do. We were going to go to Ushmal. Now, do you know, it's U-X-M-A-L, Ushmal. It's across the Yucatan. I, I mean, it's like this, this, uh, this, uh, there's this, up at the top of the Yucatan, there's a, like a peninsula part that you can get through it. Ushmal's on this side, and Chichen Itza's on this side. It's like the two horns. Kind of like in the ancient world, in the Mexican ancient world, the, the Mayan and, and uh, Aztec, they had the double-headed, you know, the jaguar, the two-headed jaguar, the, the king's here, and the priest is here, and they always argue with each other, right? And uh, that's, that's normal. In the ancient world, that's how it was. It was the same in Egypt. You'd have the pharaoh, and then you'd have the priest, and they'd argue all the time. Because in the ancient world, you weren't allowed to have the priest that's also the king, because that meant you're a god. Well, in Egypt, in the Middle Kingdom, it seized and it became a god, right? And that's when the problem started. It's about the time when God took Israel out of Egypt, too during that uh, middle, middle period. And uh, so, anyway, we were going to drive to Ushmal. It was only about maybe 150 miles, which is, what, about 400 kilometers, something like that. And the map had a, a great road, a beautiful road, just straight shot across, no problem. Even had a number on it. Only problem is, as we were driving the car, Dad and I, it's about, we had, we'd gotten something to eat for lunch at uh, Chichen Itza, and we were driving across, and Dad's in the, in the passenger seat, I'm driving, and Anna's in the back with Mom and J.D., and I think James also was very young, uh, an infant at the time, and, uh, uh, and we were driving, and as we are going along, the road started to do different splintering. And there were big roads, but the map didn't have that. So dad looks over at me, and I look at him, and it's like, we've gone maybe 70 or 80 miles. Now, we could have gone around, but why? It's, it's like double the amount of time. It's now 3.30 to 4 in the afternoon, 3.30. You're starting to get, you know, you, you don't want the sun to go down, right? Especially with some of the towns we were going through. Because if you know in Mexico, there are towns that actually are not, that the rebels are in charge, at least in 2005. Now, maybe it's different, but there are cartels that are in charge at certain areas. You'll see it because you can see that the, the power wires sometimes are cut and they're hanging down. And then you have the spray paint on the rocks. You're entering the rebel. And it's when you start getting nervous. Oh, the map says it's fine. No problem. No problem. There's a city coming up here. It's not a city. Then I saw a little, you know, one of those Jurassic Park things where there's two different directions, right? And you hope that no one spinned it, spun it. And, but the name of the town that it was pointed to was a name that I found on the map that was near to Ushmal. Praise the Lord. So I take a right with it and we keep on going no rights on the map 
The map just had one road with a couple towns you're going through. Okay, keep on going. And then you start looking up. The sun is right about here in the sky. That means I'm heading due west. Praise the Lord, Ushman. Then it starts to turn and go, oh, wait a minute. Oh, there, here we go again. Okay, okay, well, wait, 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 wait. You know, you get nervous. Every time the road starts to turn, then you start going through some jungle areas. And then we get to a little town. And that town has about three roads going out of it. Different directions. The food looked delicious, but I'm not hungry at this point. And there's no gas. And of course, that's when you start looking at your guests. Also, you start looking at all these things you were looking at before, right? And so, of course, I don't want to talk to the mom and, and Anna about, you know, that I'm nervous. Oh, I know exactly where we're going. Right? And then we start to, and then I see another little sign that says it's another town that was connected. It's on the map. Somewhere near Ushmal. Okay, we're heading that way, that town. That thing started to turn and twist. The sun continued its way down. 5.15 in the afternoon, we break onto a highway that goes north and south, and we could see the ocean. <sighs> Praise the Lord, we went to different, three different sites in a very short time. I don't remember the first site much because I was getting past all the adrenaline, because right? I didn't want the middle of the night trying to find gas, trying to push the car, even though we'd be fine. I mean, we had, we had experienced on the way to Oaxaca from Acapulco, once we uh, had three tires go out, two of them we had in the car, and the third one, we basically had to balance the car until we find a, find a tire guy, and he put an inner tube in it, and we went on our way. But the thing is, we've been through it before, but you know, you don't want to go through it. It's not fun. So, navigation is everything, isn't it? You have to know where the sun is at what time of the day. You have to know where the North Star is. And in fact, when you look up in the sky, do this sometime. It's hard in Los Angeles because there's so much light from the, the ground. So you don't see the stars as much, do you? It's kind of like life today. When there's so much going on in your life, it gets murky and it's hard to see the sky and the stars to navigate. Sometimes we're going here when it's the wrong place. Sometimes we're going here when it's the wrong place. Well, when you look up, if you look toward, you look up in the sky, you know what Big Dipper looks like? You know what Big Dipper looks like? There's two dippers. There's Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. Big Dipper and Low Dipper. Small Dipper, whatever, Little Dipper. If you look at Big Dipper and you see the panhandle, and it will go around like this during the year, like this, turning. But always, the dip part is the stars. It's five sections away from Polaris, from North Star. And North Star is a part of the Little Dipper at the Little Panhandle. But the reason why you got to use Big Dipper is there's some parts of the world where it's very hard to see Little Dipper because it's not as bright as Big Dipper. When you see the North Star, because it's directly, with our vision, it's directly above the North Pole, at that point, you know where North is, that means you know where South is, that means you know where west is and east is. That can be your coordinate. Now you can start using Orion and the, the center hoop of his belt going to the east or the west, depending on the time of the evening. Now you can see all these other things because you define one thing and all of a sudden everything else begins to make sense. Time to go back to our Bibles. Consider it pure joy, James says. And James, the brother of Jesus. He says, consider it pure joy 
when you experience trials and problems because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Every experience you go through that scares you, that you, uh, that you see that's pain, makes you what? Stronger. Frederick Nietzsche said it once, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And then, who was it that sang that? An American Idol, what was her name? The first American Idol? Kelly, Kelly Clarkson, that's right. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. It's absolutely true. Strengthening up, no pain, no gain. But you know what we want in society? We want no pain. We want ease. And that's why we do not gain. You want to know why we don't have successes like what happened in the past? Is we are so fearful of the pain of change in our lives to strengthen up. Are you with me? I know that's a hard one. Pastor, why do you believe in God? If you're working for Him, and yet your own children don't get any kind of pass with health, then what kind of God is that? I mean, can't he wave his hand around and do some magic on him? Kind of reminds me of Naaman. Remember the story of Naaman? And uh, I think, uh, Ryan, you mentioned that last week, Naaman. Naaman literally says in 1 Kings, he says, I thought he was going to come out here and wave his hand around and make this go away. Done. Ease of life. Cha-ching. Wave the hand, pay some money, it's done. But here's the problem. When that happens, we ourselves do not become stronger. I know we're all quiet today. Welcome to spring in California as the temperatures start to rise. But you know what? Maybe the reason why even sometimes our churches do poorly is because we're always trying to take the easiest way out. Are you with me on that? Do you understand what I'm saying? It was funny. I've talked about this a few times. We had to get rid of our debt in this church so that we could benefit in any way. And you know what's amazing is the minute the debt was released, all of a sudden all these other things become options for us. My friends, we try so hard in our lives to make our lives easy that we make it more difficult. The less we work our muscles, the more we need stuff to help us do stuff. But the problem is, is the less our muscles are worked, the more we need stuff to make sure we don't work our muscles. Therefore, the less our muscles work and we become weaker and weaker and weaker. Have you ever thought that maybe in your life the reason why you're dealing with things is because God actually cares about you and wants you to become stronger. Have you ever thought that? I know that's fearful to think that because you, many of your friends will say, that kind of God I don't believe in. That's terrible. Your God should give you a better life. Isn't there a reason why you should? And in fact, let me, let me stop that sentence. In the book of Psalms, you will find many places where the psalmist, whether it be David, Asaph, or others, will say, those who are unrighteous out there have ease of life. But we, why is it we, God, always get it hard? Ah, that is what makes you stronger. See, my... I want you to follow Jesus in your lives. I do. But I have, 
I always do this. And remember that. Killian, Ariel, and, and Angela, you remember in our, in our talk on the side, I said, get ready, it's going to get a little harder sometimes. On Sabbath morning before baptism, you're going to have a problem. <laughs> Something's going to come up, and there's going to be a problem because you're making a choice in your life. And the world around you and this sinful situation we are in and the devil himself doesn't want you to make that choice. So therefore, we become strong for a short time and then it pulls back. It's like the sower and the seed. You know? Sometimes hard times come and it says, some soil that it throws, some of it lands on the ground. That's like the road and it bounces. Seed doesn't get in. That's usually the good Seventh-day Adventist that doesn't want to hear anything, right? <laughs> we all know already. The politician that says, I know what's right already. The ones who want to cancel you the minute you say anything. They're the ones that already know everything. They don't need to be taught anything. I already know it. It's Twitter, you know. I just know it. It's just the way it is. Then, and that's on the left and the right, then you get the one that accepts it, right? And that person takes it in quickly, but the problem is, is since it's stony soil, the roots come out and it can't find the water and it they're excited in the beginning, but then they fall away, right? The problems of life, difficulties, pride of life. I want to be seen for who I am. I, I want people to see I'm awesome. Problem. They can no longer actually do anything for God if they're only about themselves. The seed dies in their life, and they go back to where they were before, right? Then eventually you get to the soil that is fruitful. But you know what? It's pain to grow. I'm reading articles right now by some millennial writers that are talking about how having children, just like the baby boomers back in the 60s, we shouldn't have kids. You know, that, that whole thing. And what's the point of having kids? It's just pain. It's true. I agree. You want to feel pain in your life? Watch your child dying before your eyes. Life is a whole lot safer when you don't have a kid. They don't make you look dumb. You can look, the only time you look dumb is when you do it yourself, right? Uh, your children means you got to get up in the middle of the night and feed them when they're babies. They scream, they yell. Now, J.D. was one way. J.D. was Mr. Perfect in front of crowds. And then the minute you close the door, then he'd scream his head off, right? James was opposite. In the car, no problem. But then the minute you got the church, it was no, 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 no. That was, and you know what? Get James, I know he says, he's, he's probably sitting there like this. Dad, you know what? Stubbornness is okay. Because it's that same stubbornness that will allow you to say no to things that are wrong in your life. So I'm okay with stubbornness. Doesn't mean it's easy for moms and dads. But here's the thing. I never knew what kind of person I would be until I had a kid. And then I can see myself, I do things I don't like. But then I learn how to be a better person. But how do you become a better person, you must navigate. Who is that North Star, is my question. Mothers are like a North Star in our lives. But let's not degrade this only to that. Because above them, there is a bigger North Star. One that does not go away forever and ever. What's his name? Did I put you to sleep? No, I, we got to have some, you know, you know got to wake everyone up. Maybe it's time for me to get calisthenics happening. Um, but my friends, Jesus Christ. In fact, turn with me to John chapter 5. An amazing thing that happens. And we Seventh-day Adventists are not much different than the Jewish people of the time of Jesus. The leadership in the synagogues and in the temple 
all think they had it all under control. And they see this Jesus, they're like, you're just another one. But the people saw that he cared about them, right? This is in chapter 5 of John, and I'm going to start uh, with verse 36. Jesus says, I have a weightier testimony than that of John. Now, he's talking about John the Baptist. John the Baptist had died already by this time, or around that time. It was a big hot button issue because John the Baptist was uh, very politically hated. He was canceled by, the, te by, the, by the, the temple leadership because he called them all a brood of vipers and he called them all, you know, he said, those guys who are in charge of the temple, they're not in charge of the real temple of God. Come out to the desert and you'll find a real temple at the water's edge. Be baptized and change your life. Well, that doesn't work well with the right or the left. The Pharisees and the Sadducees hated him for it. And they actually had him killed. So it's a hot button issue. So Jesus says, I have even a more important testimony than that of John. For the works that the Father gave me to finish, the very works that I am doing testify that the Father has sent me, he said. Verse 37. And the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. Do you remember when that happened? Jesus comes out of the baptismal, out of baptism. What did God say? This is my only begotten son of whom I am well pleased. God did testify. He said it multiple times in the book of John. There was another time when everybody wanted, uh, wanted to have uh, John, uh, Jesus uh, be brought in like, uh, like a king and God said it again later on. S listen to him. This is my son, listen to him. From on high it came. You have never heard his voice, nor seen his form, nor does his word dwell in you. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and the temple, the leadership. Wouldn't it be interesting if someone at church would say, you don't know what you're talking about, right? <laughs> That's basically, you guys are all with the scriptures, and yet you don't even know what we're talking about, because you don't know me, Jesus said, Right? For you do not believe in the one that God sent. Verse 39, and read this carefully. You search the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. Stop there for a second. Powerful message for us Seventh-day Adventists. We are very head knowledge people, aren't we? We all about what if you just say the right things and think the right thoughts, what happened on the 2300 days? Well, at this year, this happened, and then that happened, how that happened. And there's just, it's wonderful. It's great stuff. It is not that which saves you. Uh, okay, we know the law. We keep, we keep the Sabbath. Absolutely. The Bible's 100% for the Sabbath. But does the Sabbath save you? Well, there's a lot of people who keep the Sabbath and kept the Sabbath during the time of Christ, that we will not be seeing in heaven. Kept the law perfectly. Even tithing the mint, right? Jesus said, even tithing the mint. Imagine going to your garden and saying, okay, uh, I'm going to tithe it, so I'm going to take uh, one-tenth of it. Of course, always the tenth that we take out is always the stuff we weren't going to have anyway, right? Sorry. I'm reminded of a, story uh, from India where, uh, you know, the rupees, those rupees are like uh, so used. You know, have you been to India? Uh, no, no I, 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 we had a mission trip at my, my church, Anna and I and John, when he was very young, we went to India and, and you'll see these, these bills that are rupees and literally you can see through them. They've been used by so many people, right? Literally, it's like transparent. It's, it's so old. And so oftentimes what would happen at the church is people would give away the old rupees so they could, you know, get rid of the ones that no one wants to take at the bank. <laughs> so you'd find the, the pastor says, why do we get all the old rupees? You know what I mean? It, it's, and I know we have our own ways that we deal with it. Sometimes we give the donation that we don't, definitely don't want. Away it goes, you know. <laughs> and, but the thing is, is when we give, we give with our heart, Right? Jesus says, we're searching the scriptures 
because we think that if we all search it right and we all think the right thoughts, then we'll have eternal life. But then he continues it. He says, but these are they, these, he's referring to the scripture, these are they which testify about, Jesus says, me, not me, Pastor John, these are the ones that testify about Jesus, and yet you will not even listen. That is the reason why a country, a people, all walk over the edge of a cliff together. In the Native American world, I remember I used to see this in Montana when I was growing up as a kid. The Blackfoot Indians were really smart. They'd be able to hunt water, I mean not water, but bison. Bison, if you're in the Philippines, bison, right? And uh, they could hunt them. You know how they would do it? Instead of getting out and shooting arrows at them, it's real cheap. Just get a bunch of warriors and have them all run after them with a horse. The bison start running and they aim them in a certain direction. At the end of the place is a cliff. And at the bottom were waiting the ladies. The bison, the entire herd would go right over the cliff and they would have food for the next season. They would, uh, because the bison would all run together over the cliff. The blind leading the blind. My friends, if you don't have that North Star in your life, then you are lost. Missing is one thing. It's when other people don't know you're there. Lost, you're the only one who knows it. You must be able to look up and see true north so that you can aim your direction toward heaven. My friends, people ask and have asked when things like this happen with John. James and John had the, almost the same things that happened in their lives. When John was just four years old, I had a dear sister come to me and say what, you know, if only you had done these things or eaten these things, you know, or what is it you've done in your life that gave him this? And I go, huh, I got married to Anna and we had a baby named John. That doesn't ever answer it very well for these people because they're trying to get, come up with a different reason. Truth is, dealing with a situation that comes to you, there's a reason why we have it. And James, pull, pull out the book of James again. He gives us the answer right here. James, chapter 1, verse 4. Are you with me? I'm almost done, guys. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry at all. All right, so anyway. Uh, James 1, 4. Let perseverance, remember all, he was saying, consider it pure joy, remember that? When problems happen, because problems give us perseverance, but perseverance must finish his work. Then he continues, let perseverance finish his work so that you may be mature and complete. The word teleos is here. Teleos, telescope. We can see the future. It's like, it's like we're in the future. We, we further away from where we are today. A distance. Telios. To be mature and complete. Not lacking anything. Verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom. And by the way. In Greek. The, uh, uh, there is a syntactical uh, leverage that is used. And you can say if means there might be a question. There's an if that you say, if, you're, if you were a, a, a rock, Lenny, if you were a rock, then, well, that is going to have a different spelling. It's a different kind of a, a clause that is used. We all know he's not a rock, right? But if any of you lacks wisdom, the assumption is we all lack wisdom. So it's a question that's not really a question, it's a statement. If any of you lacks wisdom, which we do, let's read here. So if any of you lacks wisdom, which we do, you should ask God, 
who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must what? Believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave in the sea. Blown and tossed. Did you see the poster I had for this sermon? With the North Star and there in the boat. If you go online, go onto the bulletin, you'll see it. Where the guys are looking. The Rembrandt picture. The storm is happening in their life. Whether it be in the sea or in their lives, it's the same. When a storm happens, you turn and turn and turn and you don't know which way is which. You start rowing the boat or turning on the engine, going the wrong direction. Making it worse for yourself. But yet, if you can see that star above, if the star isn't seen because there is, there is a whole bunch of clouds, then stop rowing, stop moving, just stick and await the moment. In your life, you may be in one of those moments where you say, God, please show yourself, and yet you don't see anything. You're going around in circles, and you don't know. He will give, keep asking, and the sky will clear, and you start to read. This is why the Bible is so important. I want you to read. Read this book. Discover for yourself. Because you will find wisdom that will change your life. It teaches you how to find the star in your life. And then when you know, you know where west is and east is, and north and south. My friends, how is it that things like this can happen in life and yet you keep on going? How? Because it makes us stronger and better, more able. And we can pull joy from that, my friends. Did you hear me? Amen. We can pull joy from that, my friends. Amen. It is power. Power that does not come from the inside. Power that does not come from me and my own schemes, but power that comes from a unnatural source a source that empowered a human body to be resurrected on the first Easter right the real not some kind of a some kind of a pagan thing the real resurrection day that power can infuse us and you know what if you lose the North Star in your life if you had that or you start losing it. Maybe for you it's every week and then you got to come back again. Maybe for you it's longer periods. Maybe it's daily. But if you can find that North Star in your life, you will, you can, you know where to look and you can change that which must. You with me on that? My friends, my friends, I'm not asking you to look toward a denomination, a religious system. What I'm asking you to do is believe that all the problems you're going through right now, and your family perhaps, are not there to bring pain or death, but to bring about something better for you. God bless you all.
Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, Heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for being our North Star. Lord, when, when struggles of life happen, when we lack wisdom, when we are wandering, when we are lost, Lord, help us to ask for help, search for scriptures, and Lord, help us to find you, Lord, the North Star, uh, so that, we may, that you may guide us to live an abundant life, yes. but also to be with you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here with you today. Happy Sabbath, and I want to thank everyone that's come here online on the streams of life. Remember, like, subscribe, become a part of our church, whether digitally or here. We love you all, and may God bless you. Happy Sabbath. Don't forget, there's food out there, and happy Mom's Day. We love you guys. God bless. <laughs>